All right, I think let's begin. I see that we've got quite a few people here. No, I don't see the numbers going up too much right now. Um, so we'll get started. Good morning, welcome. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Jen Stevenson. I am the Associate Dean Academic in the Faculty of Arts and Science. And um, I'll begin by introducing myself and then there will be, uh, I'll do a bit of a presentation and then afterwards there will be an opportunity for uh, question and answer. So if you have uh, questions, um, you should go ahead and post them into the, uh, into the Q&A at any time during the presentation, if you think of a question or of course at the end and I'll take, I'll uh, work through the questions at that, at that time. Okay, so the topic this morning is the arts and science uh, student experience. So in my role at Queens, um, I'm a professor. I teach in the Dan School of uh, Drama and Music, but I'm an also um, Associate Dean Academic, as I mentioned. Um, and what does that, what does that mean? Um, I am uh, responsible in my role um, for your academic experience as undergraduate students um, in arts and science. And so I sort of follow you on your, on your academic journey, um, beginning with events like this, beginning with uh, speaking to prospective students at recruitment events, um, through to your, through to admission, through to um, enrolling in courses uh, in the summer before your first year. Um, I'm responsible for a curriculum. Um, I also um, oversee a team of academic advisors. Um, so those are people that you can talk to to give you advice about your um, about your program. They do one on one uh, one on one appointments to review your to review your plans and make sure you're on track. Um, I'm responsible for academic regulations um, all the way through to um, approving the degree list when you graduate. So that's my role. And like I say, I follow you on your academic um, journey. Before we talk about uh, student experience in arts and science, I want to begin um, and offer a land acknowledgement. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, I've been thinking a lot about land and how we occupy space um, these days, especially thinking about uh, thinking about pandemic, thinking about the land that the campus uh, sits on, especially now that I don't that I don't go there every day. I have my virtual background here, an image of the campus, but thinking about the land um, and what that what that physical experience of being in space um, means. And so thinking about the land makes me think also about um, the indigenous peoples um, who were here before us and continue to um, continue to be the keepers of this land, particularly in Kingston and the land that the Faculty of Arts and Science sits on um, is the traditional land of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. Um, and I want to make special remark to say that we are very grateful to live, work, and study on that land. Topic today is, as I say, the arts and science student experience. And really what today's topic is about sort of is all kinds of different things you can add on to your things you can add on to your degree. So we're gonna talk about certificates, talk about internships, we're gonna talk about going on exchange, we're gonna talk about research opportunities, um, as well as the potential for studying um, at our um, castle. Uh, we, have a, we have a campus in England. Um, we've done some previous recordings. This is part of a, this is part of a series. Um, so again, if you, if you wanna go back to some of the webinars that we've already done in the last couple of weeks, um, we did one on five reasons to choose arts and science um, and one on uh, program, program options. And I will post the, um, the website where you can find those recordings at the end of this presentation. I would also like to look ahead uh, on Saturday, we are hosting a virtual um, open house. It starts at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time. It's gonna run all day. And that's gonna be a great opportunity for you to um, talk to professors and students in the particular uh, disciplines where you want to study in the, in the, in the, in the topic where you wanna pursue your um, major and there will be breakout rooms. You can go around it's like, a, like a booth with little, like a fair with little booths. You can go around and talk to, uh, talk to those professors and the students and get that, um, get their insight on, on particular courses, on what it's like to be a major in that program. Um, so I'd encourage you to come out on, do come out on Saturday. And again, more information for that will be on the final, uh, on the final slide and on our website. Okay. Um, and as I say, there are recordings of these workshops and um, of these webinars, and this one is also being 
also being recorded for future reference. So if you want to go back and listen again, you can. Um, and if you know someone who wanted to be here this morning but couldn't, um, they can also watch later. All right, moving on. All right, uh, this is Professor Jonathan Rose of, of uh, Political Studies. Um, and um, he is speaking to, uh, he's speaking to incoming students. I see some students wearing crowns and face paint. This is part of, uh, this is part of orientation. Queens and the Faculty of Arts and Science in particular is a place where you get to choose your own, choose your own adventure. Um, in the, under the umbrella of arts and science, um, it allows you to um, participate in courses both on the arts side and on the, and on the science side. Um, so we have more than 30 departments under the arts and science uh, umbrella, everything from creative arts like music, drama, uh, film, visual art, humanities, English history, classics, philosophy, many more languages also, social sciences like psychology, sociology, gender studies, uh, political studies where Professor Rose teaches, and sciences. So life sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, more, more, more. I can't, I can't even sort of uh, list all the options. So you can choose under arts and science any one of those, um, any one of those programs. And then you can also do them in you can do them in combinations. So you might decide to do a major in an, in an arts discipline like history and add, um, you can add a minor. So you could do a minor in philosophy or you could do a minor on the science side. You could put philosophy together with physics. Um, same thing is true on the science side. Uh, you could do a major in life sciences and you could do a minor in music, let's say. So again, lots and lots of uh, flexibility. And there are no required courses in arts and science. So again, um, I like to say that your degree in arts and science will be as unique as you are. Lots and lots of opportunity to, um, to make that program your own. All right. And then this, this webinar this morning is going to speak not only to um, these major minor combinations, which I talked about in a previous, uh, in a previous webinar, but all the other things you can add to that. So you have a major, maybe you have a minor. What else can you do with your time at Queen's and your time in arts and science? So many things. So thinking about degree add-ons. So we're going to provide opportunities to add to your degree and to your, and to your resume and to your experience um, as a time in your time of being a student so that you are prepared um, for whatever comes next. So you're prepared for a graduate school or you're prepared um, for a career in whatever, whatever field um, you choose, that you're ready for the, ready for the job market. Um, these, these particular add-ons that I'm talking about here, as well as uh, our alumni network. Um, we, have an, we have an alumni network that spans 154 uh, countries and they are invaluable to helping you um, make those connections. Last weekend, um, we, ran, we ran a very successful program. This is a student initiative, um, student leaders put on, it's called Life After Art Sci. Uh, and Life After Art Sci is one of these bridging events where current students um, meet, meet alumni. And that event this year ran virtually. Uh, in past, uh, students have traveled to Toronto and to Montreal, and alumni have also traveled to, traveled to Kingston for, those, uh, for that event. It's really, very, really popular. Okay, beginning with thinking about um, internship. I know many, many students are interested uh, in internship. We have um, an internship program at Queen's. Sometimes people say co-op. Um, so we, we use the word internship. The way the internship program uh, works for us is um, it usually runs 12 to 16 months and it takes place um, between your third and fourth year typically. So three years of study, and then you will do one a year, a year and a bit um, on a paid, paid internship. The average um, salary for interns in our programs is about $42,000. You'll do your, you do your year, year and a bit internship and then return to, return to Queens, return to arts and science to finish, up, uh, to finish up your degree. And the internship becomes a credential on your, um, on your transcript. So your transcript will say, Bachelor of Arts with internship or Bachelor of Science honors with internship. Um, so that's how, uh, that's how that works. Um, and I have here with me today, um, Yu Zhou, um, who was a student who went on an internship. She is from 
China. She is a major in uh, film and media and a minor in global development studies. Um, and she participated in the internship uh, last year. So I thought I would give her an opportunity now to uh, speak about her internship, about where she, uh, where she worked and, and really what the value is. Um, what did you get out of the, what did you get out of the experience and why would you recommend internship to, to somebody else? Yeah, for sure. Um, thanks, Jen. And uh, hi, everyone. Um, I apologize. I can't seem to be able to um, start video for this chat, but I'll just speak um, in terms of the question that Jen just asked. Um, so I'm a returning intern and I'm finishing my final year at Queens in film and media. Um, and what I did for internship is I did a 12 month um, professional internship at Queens. Um, and my role was the communications and marketing intern at the student uh, division of student affairs. Um, mainly my job uh, was divided into two office, offices. In the morning, I work for career services. And in the afternoon, I work uh, at the student experience office. And um, this gives me great advantage of um, getting into different projects and different types of works that those offices um, do. So for example, in career services, I would uh, um, help to manage uh, their whole communications plan and mainly including like a social media outreach plan and also assist with different projects that uh, serve students professional development. And for student experience, experience office, it's very different. Um, uh, some like the big projects I work for are like uh, university orientation. And some of the programs like they run throughout the semester like Q uh, Success and Queens Reads. And my role was mainly to support the communication aspects of it. And some of the very exciting things I did were um, um, conducted social media campaign or um, host event, um, virtual event um, that sort of foster a sense of community for everyone. And uh, that's the um, general of what I did for my internship. And as for the reason why I choose to do this, um, I guess this may sound very personal, um, but uh, I, uh, around like uh, at towards the end of my third year, I was starting to thinking uh, my plans after graduation. And I knew that um, I would like to keep studying, doing further education. And also I know the ultimate goal for me is to um, launch my career at some point after graduation. Um, so I was sort of realizing there is some part of my experience for the past uh, three years that maybe I could still refine a little bit and add on something different that would uh, not only add to my resume, but something I could talk about in relation to my whole experience at Queens. And um, so I reached out to Career Services and uh, learned about the QUIP, the internship opportunity. And um, the one thing that was really great that uh, was career services would help um, the uh, job exploration process and help you uh, apply for job. And also they provide workshops for resume um, review and uh, cover letter writing. So um, yeah. Great, thank you for that. Sounds like it was a great experience. And it also sounds like the internship program QUIP really was very supportive and helped you, helped you get, you know, as you say, get your resume organized, inter interview skills and help launch you into that, into that position. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so stay with me. And, and at the end, maybe I'll have, maybe some of, the, um, some of the prospective students who are joining us will have questions for you as well. Awesome. All right, great, let's continue. All right, thinking about research, undergraduate research, again, is a very, um, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity as a way to kind of add on, add on to your degree. So in addition to hands-on research experiences, uh, inquiry-based learning that you're going to have uh, in, your, in the classroom, there are also opportunities to um, work on research projects in a number of different ways. Um, so one way to do that is to, um, uh, participate in uh, the research that your professors are doing. So every professor at Queens is not only um, a teacher but also a researcher, um, and we are we are busy 
uh, with our own investigations and professors are always uh, looking for students to, uh, to join them. And that might involve um, working in a lab. Um, so there are labs in, uh, there are labs in psychology and physics and chemistry, biology and all the, um, all the STEM disciplines. Uh, professors are running, running research labs, which is kind of what you think of what perhaps when you imagine uh, when you imagine research. Um, but you'll see here also one of these images is from um, uh, the Queen's Biology Station. So we have a research uh, property um, north, of, uh, north of Kingston um, that includes uh, two very large lakes, uh, many, many acres, and students often will go there um, and actually take up residence. There are, there are student researchers there working with um, working with professors um, through through all seasons. They're they're there in the they're there in the summer often, um, as well as spring, fall, winter. So again, it's a very active research site. We've been collecting data um, at the biology station for more than 70 years. So we have a great longitudinal longitudinal data on the plants, on the on the lakes there, on the on the um, on the birds and other wildlife over that long period of time. In the bottom corner here, you see a sort of a top-down aerial shot of um, the atrium in Stauffer Library. And what's going on here is um, the final um, presentations um, by um, student re summer researchers. So we have a um, summer research fellowship uh, where students are uh, paid to work one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a professor for the whole summer. Um, and in that partnership, the student um, assists with the professor's research and then also does the pro a research project, a research project um, of their of their own. Uh, it's a it's a marvelous project. I had I had a summer student uh, last summer um, um, who worked with who worked with me. And again, that's very common. There's about it's a little bit competitive, but there's about twenty or twenty five positions that regularly get offered um, through the through summer research fellowship. Um, and so lots of opportunities to work with professors in uh, in every discipline. Um, and to yourself become a uh, become a researcher through that through that experience. Okay. Certificates. So in addition to um, doing a major, and then possibly also adding on a minor in a different discipline, you can also add a certificate. A certificate is a suite of uh, four, five, six courses um, in a, around a particular topic. Um, that you can add to your, um, you can add to your degree. Um, so there's about 12 different certificates um, in, uh, in arts and science. So for example, there's a certificate in media studies, a certificate in employment relations, uh, geographic information science, certificate in international studies, certificate in sexual and gender diversity. Uh, there's a certificate in entrepreneurship, innovation and creativity. Um, there's one on French for professionals, uh, urban planning studies, uh, global action and engagement, and indigenous languages and culture. So you can see the wide range of, um, of these certificates that you can add on, add on to your degree. Um, and you don't need to be a, a major in any of those areas to add on a certificate from a completely, from a completely different, from a completely different area. So those are some options. Um, also, we have um, certificates that you can do in other faculties. So even as a student in arts and science, um, you can do a certificate in business and a certificate in law. And those are specially designed for arts and science students to add to their, to add to their degree. So that's certificates. I love this picture. Um, so one of the neat things about Queens uh, is that we have a campus in England this is what it looks like. It is called the Bader International Study Center. Sometimes you'll hear people say BISC, B-I-S-C, BISC. Um, and BISC is, this is Hurst Monceau Castle. Um, this is a real medieval castle. Uh, it was built in 1444 um, and it is owned now by, <laughs> owned by Queen's University and we have students who um, study there. Um, not, not this year, students didn't go this year because of because of the pandemic, but normally um, 150 first year students travel to the castle to do their whole first year program there. So that is, that is an option. We are, we are very keen to return uh, next September. So if you're incoming first year student, you can do your whole first year 
at the castle. You can do first year arts, you can do first year, first year science. If, it, if you don't choose to choose to go to the castle in first year, that's not your only opportunity. That door is still open to you. Um, upper year students travel to the castle. It is possible to go for, um, for a semester, say in winter, um, and there are, there are suites of courses. Um, so you might go and do three courses in politics um, that, are, that are sort of tailored, uh, tailored together. Um, and then there are summer programs. There is um, um, Summer Plus, which is um, a, a program where you take a couple of courses and you also do a research project. And again, a research project working with um, faculty uh, at the castle. Um, and there are other, there are other sort of summer, um, other summer cohorts. I've gone to the castle um, many times. Uh, I've taught their uh, mid course in medieval drama. So again, travel with a cohort of students from Queens. Um, and my, in, in my course, we spend three weeks there um, in August. Um, studying medieval drama. And we have field trips, we go to Canterbury, uh, we go to London, uh, we go to Brighton, um, and then the students participate uh, in um, creating a performance for um, a medieval fair, medieval festival that um, happens every year on the grounds at her small so. So it's a really kind of an amazing, um, an amazing experience. The students, uh, the students love it. Part of the mode of teaching um, at, at the castle, we just say the castle, um, at the castle is a strong emphasis on experiential learning. So lots of, lots of field study. Um, classes only run Monday to Thursday. So there's field study uh, typically, typically on Friday. Um, and field study could involve working on the castle grounds. There's a major archeological dig uh, in, in progress in the, in the local area. Um, students also go on field trip to Paris, uh, to Berlin, um, and lots of times to London and to other, um, other locations around, um, around the UK. So it really is an amazing, uh, an, an amazing experience. Um, like I say, I've taught there, I taught there four times um, and the castle is very close to my heart. So strongly encourage you to think about that as part of your, um, as part of your Queen's experience. It's kind of amazing. All right. Finally, I just want to say before we move on to thinking about questions, you know, thinking about thinking about Queens, thinking about your experience, you know, a good university helps you plan for the next four to five years, a great university helps you plan for the rest of your life. So again, we've been talking about your experience at Queens, but this is just the first step to set you up for um, for what comes next, um, whether it's further study, moving on to a career, um, being a citizen in the world. Um, you are going to get a good grounding, um, a good, a good, a good, a good start um, in arts and science and at Queens. All right. Thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I know it's I know it's early. Uh, we thought that we thought that 7 a.m. Um, Eastern time would be a good time to uh, get people before before school or before uh, before work. Here is what's happening next. Um, so as mentioned, we have our virtual open house on Saturday, and there are the uh, there's the details. I hope you will I hope you will join us. I will be there. Um, and below we see so you see some websites. Please do check in on these websites. Um, the first one, uh, queensu.ca artsci connect. We are running a student ambassador program. Uh, so if you want to be connected one on one to a student. Um, we have 25 ambassadors in a range of um, different majors, and they would be happy to um, chat, uh, exchange emails, however you want to contact them. Uh, they'd be happy to answer questions about, about student experience and tell you stories about their own, um, their own experience and their own journey uh, in arts and science. We have Why Art Sci page, and that's where you're going to find um, the links to these uh, video recordings. Um, and then finally, I want to flag for you uh, Queen's admission. Um, and so if you have any questions about your application, um, about, about student awards, about scholarships, um, about, the, about the technical aspects of the application program, recommend looking uh, at that website. They have a really great FAQ and you can also, um, and also email them with your questions.